as myself for the purpose of making an opening statement. Since assuming our Republican majority in January, the House Oversight and Accountability Committee has uncovered a mountain of evidence revealing how Joe Biden abused his public office for his family's financial gain. For years, President Biden has lied to the American people about his knowledge of and participation in his family's corrupt business schemes. At least 10 times, Joe Biden lied to the American people that he never spoke to his family about their business dealings. He lied by telling the American people that there was an absolute wall between his official government duties and his personal life. Let's be clear, there was no wall. The door was wide open to those who purchased what a business associate described as the Biden brand. Evidence reveals that then Vice President Joe Biden spoke, dined, and developed relationships with his family's foreign business targets. These business targets include foreign oligarchs who sent millions of dollars to his family. It also includes a Chinese national who wired a quarter of a million dollars to his son. Joe Biden also lied to the American people about his family making money in China. He continued to lie about it even when the House Oversight Committee uncovered bank wires revealing how the Bidens received millions from Chinese companies with significant ties to Chinese intelligence and the Chinese Communist Party. Just this week, we uncovered two additional wires sent to Hunter Biden that originated in Beijing from Chinese nationals. This happened when Joe Biden was running for president of the United States and Joe Biden's home is listed as the beneficiary address. To date, the House Oversight Committee has uncovered how the Bidens and their associates created over 20 shell companies, most of which were created when Joe Biden was vice president, and raked in over $20 million between 2014 and 2019. We've also identified nine Biden family members who have participated in or benefited from these shady business schemes. Now, what were the Bidens selling to make all this money? Joe Biden himself. Joe Biden is the brand, and Joe Biden showed up at least two dozen times with business targets and associates sending signals of access, influence, and power to those prepared to pay for it. The American people demand accountability for this culture of corruption. They demand to know how these schemes have compromised President Biden and threatened our national security. They demand safeguards to be put in place to prevent public officials from selling access to their public office for private gain. Under the leadership of Speaker Kevin McCarthy, House Republicans have now opened an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. By opening an impeachment inquiry, our investigation is now focused on whether President Biden engaged in impeachable offenses under the U.S. Constitution. It empowers Congress, elected by the people, to continue providing the answers, transparency, and accountability that the American people demand and deserve. In recent history, Democrats inflicted much damage on the credibility of congressional investigations by peddling the Russian collusion hoax. But this committee, under this majority, will not pursue such witch hunts based on manufactured allegations, innuendo, and no real evidence. Today, the House Oversight Committee will examine over two dozen pieces of evidence revealing Joe Biden's corruption and abuse of public office. This includes emails, text messages, bank records, and testimony of Biden business associates. We will hear from legal and financial experts about this evidence and crimes that may have been committed as Joe Biden was sold around the world. The House Oversight Committee, along with the committees on the judiciary and ways and means, will continue to follow the money and the evidence to pr provide accountability so that Americans know their public offices are not for sale. I now yield to Jason Smith, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, for his opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Comer. Yesterday, the Ways and Means Committee released new documents showing President Biden was not just aware of his son's business dealings, but he was connected to them. In a newly released message to a Chinese business executive, Hunter Biden mentions preserving the, quote, keys to my family's only asset. That asset, Joe Biden. New evidence released in response to questions raised by members of the committee on both sides when Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler, the two IRS whistleblowers, testified in July paints a disturbing picture of a revolving door between Joe Biden's office and Hunter Biden's business partners. According to a worksheet provided by IRS whistleblower 
Ziegler, then Vice President Biden's April 2014 official visit to Ukraine occurred only days after a series of White House meetings with Hunter Biden and his business associates regarding Ukraine. Shortly after Joe Biden returned stateside, the Ukrainian company Burisma announced Hunter Biden's appointment to its board. New evidence provided shows Hunter Biden using his father's position to gain favor with billionaire Miguel Aleman, including having Joe Biden host them at the White House in February of 2014 at the vice president's residence alongside Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim in November of 2015, and then in 2016 using Air Force Two to shuttle Hunter Biden and his business associate to Mexico City. Whether it was lunches, phone calls, White House meetings, or official foreign trips, Hunter Biden cashed in by arranging access to Joe Biden, the family brand. The Biden family and their associates received millions in payments from foreign sources, including from Russia, China, Ukraine, Romania. In one email, Hunter Biden even bragged that he cut a deal for 10 million from just one company for, quote, introductions alone. And yet the DOJ wanted to keep the spotlight as far from Joe Biden as possible. One of the items we released yesterday was an IRS interview with James Biden, the president's brother, in September of 2022. The agency was barred in the interview from asking him about Joe Biden and about whether Joe Biden was involved in Hunter Biden's deal with a Chinese energy company. And when Hunter Biden had his tax liability of over two million mysteriously paid for by a Democrat Party donor named Kevin Morris, who he barely knew, something IRS investigators saw as a possible campaign finance violation, Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf said she did not want any of the agents to look into the allegation. Behind, uh, on the board are notes Agent Shapley took from that meeting. He notes that Wolf told investigators that she was not, quote, personally interested in pursuing it. This is the same attorney, Wolf, who in an email we released yesterday responded to IRS investigators seeking approval for a search warrant with, quote, there should be nothing about political figure one in here, that being a reference by definition of Joe Biden. The Biden family sold access to Joe Biden's power and the Biden Justice Department protected the Biden brand. We must continue to follow the facts. I yield, I yield to Jim, uh, I yield to Representative Jordan. I thank the gentleman for yielding. This is a tale as old as time. Politician takes action that makes money for his family and then he tries to conceal it. Never forget four fundamental facts. Hunter Biden gets put on the board of Burisma. Gets paid a lot of money. Hunter Biden's not qualified, fact number two, to sit on the board. Not my words, his words. He said he got on the board because of the brand, because of the name. Fact number three, the executives at Burisma asked Hunter Biden to weigh in and help them with the pressure they are under from the prosecutor in Ukraine. Fact number four, Joe Biden goes to Ukraine on December 9th, 2015, gives the speech attacking the prosecutor that starts the process of getting that guy fired. Those facts, by the way, are consistent with what the confidential human source told the FBI and the FBI recorded in the 1023 form, the same form that the Justice Department didn't want to let this committee see. And all those facts, all of that was further confirmed yesterday with the information that the Ways and Means Committee released from the whistleblowers Shapley and Ziegler. Here's a communication from Hunter Biden to an executive with Burisma. Devin and I do feel comfortable with Blue Star strategy, the, uh, strategies and the ability of Sally and Karen to deliver. Hunter Biden put Burisma in, in touch with Blue Star strategies. What were they going to deliver? Well, that was in a communication released yesterday as well. U.S. officials in Ukraine and in the United States need to express support for Burisma and Nikolai Zalsevsky to the highest level decision makers, the president of Ukraine, the president's chief of staff, and the prosecutor general. That's what they were gonna deliver. And was they, were they successful? 
The Interior Minister confirmed that Zolachevsky is no longer wanted. We won in less than a year communications between the folks at Blue Star and Eric Sherwin, who was Hunter Biden's business partner. Uh, uh, partner. Awesome work. Congratulations to you guys. Those are the communications. That's what they got done. And remember, when this happens in October 2016, when, they, when the pressure is taken off, the case is dropped against Zolachevsky, this is the second prosecutor. Joe Biden fired the first one. The second prosecutor comes in, drops the charges. That's exactly what they wanted done. And the final step, the final step is the Biden Justice Department tries to sweep it all under the rug. They slow walk the investigation. They let the statute of limitations lapse for the most important years, 14 and 15, the Burisma years when all that income's coming in. They try to put together this sweetheart deal and get it past the judge. And we learned yesterday in the search warrant application, in the search warrant examining Hunter Biden's electronic communications, they weren't allowed to ask about political figure one. Political figure number one is the big guy, is Joe Biden. And they would have gotten away with it all. They would have gotten away with it all, except for two brave whistleblowers who sat in those seats two months ago and told their story. And their story has stood up. Two brave whistleblowers and a judge in Delaware who said, we're not going to let this happen. That's why we're here today. That's why this inquiry is so darn important. It's, as, it's a, the oldest story in the world, and those are the facts. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes Ranking Member Raskin of Maryland for his opening statement. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, before I give my opening statement, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, given that the committee has not been authorized by the full House to conduct an impeachment inquiry, am I correct in assuming that we're obligated to follow the rules of the House, including Section 370 of the Rules and Manual, which prescribe engaging in personalities towards the president? Uh, at ease with Well, considering this is an investigation of Joe Biden, I assume that his name's going to come up. Right, but um, the House has not authorized us as an impeachment inquiry, so we're just operating with the general rules. And I think saying that the president lied is considered engaging in a personality. Uh, in fact, uh, section, section 370 says accusations that the president has committed a crime or even that the president has done something illegal are unparliamentary. And we're operating with the general rules of the House because the House has not authorized. The Speaker of the House has authorized the impeachment inquiry. It has been authorized. I, okay. All right. Point uh, of parliamentary inquiry. The, the ranking member who... who What's your attention, Ms. Ocasio Cortez? I, I believe changing of the rules must require a vote from the full House of Representatives. The rules of the committee. The, the chair overrules a point of order. While articles of impeachment are not directly before this committee, we are looking into the potential wrongdoing of the president. <clears throat> Given the unique nature and subject matter of today's hearing topic. Uh, these words will not be ruled out of order. So, okay. uh, Ranking Member Ashton, please proceed. Thank you for clarifying, uh, Mr. Chairman. We, we obviously have an honest disagreement about that. Um, all right, so let's get it straight. We're 62 hours away from shutting down the government of the United States of America, and Republicans are launching an impeachment drive based on a long debunked and discredited lie. No foreign enemy has ever been able to shut down the government of the United States, but now mega Republicans are about to do just that. But they don't want to cut off public services to the people and deny paychecks to more than a million service members without first launching an impeachment drive, even when they don't have a shred of evidence against President Biden for an impeachable offense. And you think I'm being harsh? Here's what some Republicans have had to say over the last week about the actions of the Republicans as they watch up close, quote, the dysfunction caucus at work, in the words of our GOP colleague from Nebraska, Don Bacon, clown show, foolishness, terribly misguided, stupidity, failure to lead, lunatics, disgraceful, new low, pathetic, enabling Chairman Xi, people that have serious issues, those folks don't have a plan, show just how broken they are, and individuals that just want to burn the whole place down. Now, if I said any of these things, 
they'd probably take my words down. But these are Republicans talking about Republicans. So let's be clear. This isn't partisan warfare America's seeing today. It is chaotic infighting between Republicans and Republicans. It's MAGA versus extreme MAGA, as if anybody in the real world could tell the difference between the two. What a staggering failure of leadership. Speaker McCarthy's invertebrate appeasement of the most fanatical elements of his conference now threatens the well-being of every American. Now, some people <clears throat> think the members of the GOP caucus aren't interested in anything logical. They just want to see the world burn, as Alfred Pennyworth put it in the dark night. But I see a method in the madness. A week ago, Donald Trump posted a comment saying that a government shutdown, quote, is the last chance to defund these political prosecutions against me and other patriots. You get it? To delay justice, Donald Trump would cut off paychecks to a couple million service members and federal workers and furlough more than a million workers and pay them later for having not worked. They would halt food assistance to millions of moms and kids and keep NIH in my district from enrolling any more patients in life and death clinical research trials. Trump's convinced that if we shut the government down, his four criminal prosecutions on 91 different felony and misdemeanor charges will be defunded and delayed long enough to keep him from having to go before a jury of his peers before the 2024 election. And like flying monkeys on a mission for the Wicked Witch of the West, Trump's followers in the House now carry his messages out to the world, shut down the government, shut down the prosecutions. But the cult master has another command for his followers, which brings us here today. On August 27th, he posted this edict, either impeach the bum or fade into oblivion. They did it to us. Of course, the standard for impeachment is not whether they did it to us, but whether the president committed treason or bribery or other high crimes and misdemeanors. But the Constitution's irrelevant to them. What counts is what Donald Trump wants. As Republican Representative Ken Buck, a Freedom Caucus member, told CNN the other day, President Trump has gone on his social media account and said we should be impeaching President Biden. Kevin McCarthy said we have an impeachment inquiry. You draw the conclusion, directly or indirectly, this impeachment inquiry was a result of President Trump's pressure. So we move from a Trump-ordered government shutdown to a Trump-ordered impeachment process, and yet back in the reality-based world, the majority sits completely empty-handed with no evidence of any presidential wrongdoing, no smoking gun, no gun, no smoke. In fact, we have had to slide awkwardly into a House impeachment process without the benefit of the floor vote that Speaker McCarthy insisted was absolutely imperative and necessary when Donald Trump was impeached. In fact, they went to the Department of Justice and they got an OLC opinion saying, quote, no committee may undertake the momentous move from legislative oversight to impeachment without the delegation by the full House of such authority. OLC opinion, January 19th, 2020. And that's why the House voted in the case of Donald Trump, but that's exactly what has not happened here because they don't have the votes because dozens of Republicans recognize what a futile and absurd process this is. Now, the title of the hearing is the basis for an impeachment inquiry of President Joseph Biden. <clears throat> and yet they present us no basis at all today even after eight months of investigation. They've invited three witnesses to testify. Not one of them is an eyewitness to a presidential crime of any kind. Not one of them is a direct fact witness about any of the events related to Ukraine and Burisma. Not one of them has participated in the eight months of investigation in which our distinguished chairman has publicly boasted that he received 100% of everything he asked for. And I quote, every subpoena that I've signed as chairman of the House Oversight Committee over the last five months, we've gotten 100% of what we've requested, whether it's with the FBI, with the banks, or with Treasury. That means we are the real witnesses here. In fact, <clears throat> the committee has received 12,000 pages of bank records. Here they are, right in front of us, printed double-sided, and not a single page shows a dime going 
to President Joe Biden. We've received 2,000 pages of SARS reports the chairman subpoenaed. We've held hearings and conducted interviews with everybody from Hunter Biden's business partners to a federal agent assigned to that investigation. And still, we found no evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden. If the Republicans had a smoking gun or even a dripping water pistol, they would be presenting it today, but they've got nothing on Joe Biden. All they can do is return to the thoroughly demolished lie that Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump launched five years ago, the Burisma conspiracy theory, a fairy tale so preposterous that one of its main authors, Lev Parnas, has now disowned and repudiated it. This is the theory that Vice President Biden, global anti-corruption groups, and most Western govern governments targeted Ukraine Prosecutor General Shokin for removal because he was threatening the Burisma Corporation whose board Hunter Biden served on. Trump synthesized the lie in his August 27th post about President Biden, saying, look, the guy got bribed, he paid people off, and he wouldn't give $1 billion to Ukraine unless they, quote, got rid of the prosecutor. Trump's story is the opposite of the truth. When Biden was VP, he worked as a key player in the Obama administration and global community's efforts to combat corruption in Ukraine. In late 2015, as part of a coordinated global effort, Biden called for the removal of Viktor Shokin, a corrupt Ukrainian prosecutor general who did nothing about corruption in Ukraine other than to participate in it, rather than assist British authorities who were actually investigating Burisma and its owner, Shokin consistently frustrated their efforts. The leadership provided by Biden was part of a broad bipartisan campaign to oppose corruption in Ukraine. In early 2016, Republican senators, Ron Johnson, Rob Portman, and Mark Kirk, wrote to the Ukrainian president assailing corruption in his country and urging him, quote, to press ahead with urgent reforms to the prosecutor general's office. Yet years later, in 2018, as President Trump saw Biden as a strong rival in the 2020 election, he worked with Giuliani to twist all the facts around and to suddenly accuse Biden of corruption in calling for the dismissal of a corrupt prosecutor. A few months ago, Chairman Comer and the committee received an insider's account of the plan to concoct and spread this lie from an extraordinary letter sent to us by Lev Parnas, who was Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man. Giuliani and Parnas searched high and low to find anyone who would endorse their contortions about Biden. Their failing crusade culminated in the infamous phone call that then-President Trump made to Ukrainian President Zelensky, in which Trump threatened to withhold hundreds of millions of dollars in economic, strategic, and military security assistance to Ukraine unless Zelensky embraced their ridiculous fabrication and falsely advertised to the world that Ukraine was investigating Joe Biden. This shakedown became the basis for the first House impeachment of President Trump. Giuliani's big lie has been thoroughly debunked by multiple sources. As Congressman Buck, a former chief of the criminal division of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Colorado, and a member of the House Freedom Caucus said, and I quote, there is in fact no evidence that Shokin was engaged in an investiga investigation of Burisma or that Joe Biden's role in his firing was in any way connected to Burisma. He continued, what's missing despite years of investigation is the smoking gun that connects Joe Biden to his never-do-well son's corruption. It's scandalous to use impeachment to establish a counterfeit moral equivalence between President Biden, an honorable public servant who has never been indicted or convicted of anything in his career of more than 50 years in public life, and Donald Trump, a twice impeached president who's recently been found in court to have sexually abused and defamed a woman and fraudulently inflated the value of his real estate properties while facing 91 criminal charges in four separate indictments on everything from conspiring to overthrow an election and defraud the American people to making criminal hush money payoffs to stealing classified government documents and hiding them while obstructing justice. Impeachment is the people's final weapon of constitutional self-defense against a president 
president who behaves like a king and violates the public trust by committing treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors equivalent to them. It is reserved for extraordinary public offenses like inciting a violent insurrection against the American government and trying to overthrow our presidential election. That offense in 2021, whose related crimes have resulted in hundreds of criminal convictions and hundreds more being prosecuted, led to Donald Trump's second impeachment in the House on a massive bipartisan vote of 232 to 197 and a similarly lopsided bipartisan vote of 57 to 43 in the Senate. I wonder how many of my esteem are equivalent to them. It is reserved for extraordinary public offenses like inciting a violent insurrection against the American government and trying to overthrow our presidential election. That offense in 2021, whose related crimes have resulted in hundreds of criminal convictions and hundreds more being prosecuted, led to Donald Trump's second impeachment in the House on a massive bipartisan vote of 232 to 197 and a similarly lopsided bipartisan vote of 57 to 43 in the Senate. I wonder how many of my esteemed Republican colleagues here who all voted against impeaching Donald Trump if they were in the House at that point can reconcile their votes against impeaching Trump for the grave crime of inciting a violent insurrection against the government with their calls supporting impeachment of Joe Biden for allegedly committing a high crime misdemeanor that has not even been defined yet, much less proven. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> um, if this dysfunction caucus is going to insist on going forward, we must receive the testimony of Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas, the insiders who know the origins of the lie upon which this sham impeachment is based and who work to spread it. We know that Mr. Parnas is ready and willing to testify, and as a former U.S. attorney and mayor, Mr. Giuliani will surely agree to enlighten us on everything. Pursuant to Clause 2K6 of Rule 11, I move that the committee subpoena Rudy Giuliani and Love Parnas to come and testify in these hearings. And I would like to ask for a vote on that or debate, as you would please, Mr. Chairman. So, I think you made a motion to subpoena. <clears throat> Are they going to table it? I didn't hear. All right. So they are wanting a vote right there, the Democrats, on subpoenaing uh, Rudy Giuliani. So what you're watching are the opening statements here, the House oversight hearing on the Biden impeachment inquiry. I don't want you to miss too much of this. So let's head to a quick two minute.